So what's a what's a former governor of Massachusetts doing here this morning? <laughs> Dear wife, the former first lady. Um, many of you may recall that uh, for four or five years I taught during the winter at FAU. So we were residents of this very special part of the state and country. We had a wonderful time. Fortunately or unfortunately, our kids all decided to move west of us. And so even though we loved you and had a great time at FAU, we decided to spend our winters at UCLA. Now, why would Bostonians want to spend their winters here at UCLA? Because one of us, my wife in particular, despite her New England origins, just can't handle New England winters, particularly this last one. So the past 16 years, we've been out at UCLA, but uh, we have a very special spot in our hearts for you and for my students at FAU when I was there and of course we're also related to this project because Nicole Brochu, Nicole Sturgis Brochu, is the daughter of my dear cousin Dr. Stratton Sturgis, <coughs> married to Rich and so we've been involved with them and uh, some of you recall we came down to a series of fundraising events last year and when they called we said sure we'll be here. Um, but I want to say two things. First, those of you who know me know that among other things I'm a parks fanatic and uh, presided over the greatest period of park acquisition in the history of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts when I was governor and still continue to be a parks advocate. So I think what you've done here Matt, is terrific and I want to commend all of you for doing so. And secondly, of course, we feel very strongly about the Academy and what it is doing. And uh, it is one of a series of efforts around the country, folks, to try to link sports, sporting kinds of activities with academia and really connect with youngsters in a way which will not only give them a great interest in the particular sport or sporting activity, but at the same time help them to understand that if they're going to succeed personally, they've got to do that in the classroom as well as wherever they may be doing their sports activity. And uh, what the Academy is trying to do, I think, is absolutely terrific. It's going to make, and it already has made, an enormous difference in the lives of lots and lots of young people who continue to do so. And Mayor, to you and your colleagues in the government of this city, and to all of you who have been so supportive of this, all I can tell you is that you're doing the Lord's work, and I hope you'll continue to do so. And uh, if you want us to come down here occasionally, it's not that painful to tell you the truth. <laughs> and we've had a terrific four or five days, and we'll be back. But uh, we're just very proud of you very proud of what you've done, very proud of this program, and it's really a model for the kind of thing we ought to be doing in communities all over the country. So, uh, on, on behalf of Kitty and myself, just want to say thanks for inviting us, thanks for being here. I used to do this often, you know, when I was governor. Where the hell is the governor, by the way? Why isn't he here? <laughs> Don't get me started on trains. Many of you know that I'm not only a parks fanatic, I'm a high-speed train fanatic, so... And, you know, we'll take the money and use it in New England. It's really kind of crazy, folks. Uh, we've been on I-95 a few times, even in this past four or five days. Every time we come down here, it's the same. And I don't think you can widen it much more. And if you don't find yourselves an alternative, it'll make it possible for people to move around this place. So you're all going to be choking to death. And we know something about congestion, given the fact that we spent three months in Los Angeles. That's, that's something to see. So uh, just wanted to throw that in. Uh, in any event, if you see the governor, tell him you talk to another governor who thinks that it's time Florida gets serious about high speed rail. Anyway, enough of that. Thanks for having me. I wanted to also introduce some colleagues that the governor mentioned. We have uh, Commissioner Bill Orlov here, uh, part of the team. Commissioner Woodrow Hay. We've got our city manager and assistant city manager for President Laurie Labier. I never get that right. Uh, David Cole from the Arts. Where's um, Barbara? Barbara, head of the Arts Commission, and she'll be speaking t uh, later. But now, I think Rich. Yeah, yeah, you can, let's skip the program because maybe the stars will show up. So you want me to just end it right well, here? No. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara. Barbara, you want to come up? Okay. And then Rich will come up on stage. Okay, great. Good morning.
morning, everyone. Thank you for all coming today. Um, my name is Barbara Ruidi. I chair the Arts Commission. Uh, that's the advisory board to the city of Boynton Beach on the Art and Public Places program. Our, our mission is to enrich our community through public art. And welcome to the celebration of the new art artwork commissioned to do just that. I don't know if you've had an opportunity to walk down to the other end of the driveway, but we have another mural down there uh, that was done by Peter a Egerty. Uh, an accomplished graffiti and public artist. He was selected by our Arts Commission through the public art process. He was commissioned by Rec and Parks to create artwork that expresses the Boat Club Parks character and the proximity to the Boynton Beach Inlet, our city's tagline, which is the gateway to the Gulf Stream, and the historical connection to Boynton's fishing community and nautical lifestyle. This mural that greets you as you drive towards the boat ramp is named Gateway to the Gulf Stream. The second featured mural on the boat ramp staging wall pays homage to Boynton's fishing community, historically up through today's conservation tag and release selfish pra practice. This mural is called Ode to Boynton Beach. In Boynton, P Peter Egerty also was the lead artist working with the Youth Violence Prevention Program to do our graffiti, uh, graffiti mural. He completed a 2,500 square foot graffiti mural called Neighborhood Vibes in Sarah Sims. Peter's artwork has been exhibited in galleries from Palm Beach to Miami. For several years, he participated in graffiti exhibits at Art Basel in Miami. Recently, Peter teamed up with Shore, Shore Thing, S-H-O-R-E, Shore Thing, a coastal lifestyle apparel company that features his signature artwork. Peter expresses his regrets for not being able to attend today. He's in Texas working on a corporate mural commission. He would like to extend an invitation to everyone here to come back and meet the artist April 30th from 5 to 7, um, down by his murals, down by the other end of the park. So thank you very much for coming today. Well, thank you. I kind of hoped that was going to be a little longer. Um, <laughs> I'm sure the Snells will be here, um, but I'd like to say a few words about them that they already know about because they did this. They live in Key Largo, okay? He's 15 years old and he goes to high school still. Relentlessly, they drove up here. Um, there was 17 total days that they came up here from Key Largo for no pay, no incentive other than to, to um, support our organization in this community. What's funny was, and I don't remember the date, I believe the um, his great uncle was a commissioner in Boynton some 20, 30 years ago. So little guy's uncle was a commissioner here. So it's kind of ironic that it made a full circle being back here. Um, so I'm going to kind of, you know, skip over a little bit. I did have, you know, a speech and now I'm all confused because now they all screwed me up. <laughs> um, this here. Also, who's not here, who is supposed to be here, Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation. They actually donated the money or gave the money to this organization so that we could buy the paint and the material to fix this building up. They also, while the Snells were here, paid for their hotel room. I believe it was somewhere in the neighborhood of at least $3,000. Um, if anybody, I'm sure a lot of you guys that have been here in the city know this building. It was not in very good shape when we got it. We had people that came and volunteered from the community. They tore off all the woodwork. They um, stuccoed the entire building. They donated the stucco. Um, gave us impact windows for this building. So it's been a, it's been a good community support. Um, you know, we've got our little fruits and vegetables in here for the kids so when they start getting cooking, they can start using some of the tomatoes and spices and herbs and all that good stuff. So we had a plaque for Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation, but they didn't, as, don't know where they are. They haven't called me yet and said they're coming yet, but we'll put that one down here too. Um, but most important, I need to thank the city because without the city, the support of the commission, the mayor, city manager, Wally and his team, um, Relentless. I mean, what we had to do to get this thing going to start out with. Um, we tried a year ago and that didn't work, and we tried again and we finally got it. So the kids come here on a regular basis. 
there. We're here from 1 to 4 almost every Saturday. The only time we take a Saturday off is if we're actually out on the boat fishing. And at that point, our kids are with us anyway. So, you know, it's a great facility. It's a great spot because we can go down here. We have piers. We have docks. So I would like to present this plaque to the city of Boynton Beach. Maybe you want to come up and accept? Thank you.